See my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, okay. You see here a calendar? Yeah. Okay. So before we go to our Gomorrah here in Baba Kama, um, I'm going to share something very interesting. I'll tell you why uh, we're discussing the year calendar now, because uh, last Shabbos was, or last Friday was a Sorba Tevis. And uh, the question is whether a Sorba Tevis uh, could ever fall on a Shabbos. And what happens if it would fall on a Shabbos? So before we go to a Sorba Tevis, I want to show you a few interesting things on this year's calendar. Is it clear? Is the screen clear? Yeah, yeah. A little bit. I'll make it a drop bigger. Okay. So it's better. You could see my little uh, hand? Finger? Yeah, yeah. Your little hand. My little yeah. hand, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's begin with uh, Chodesh Tishri. Chodesh Tishri, this is a calendar from uh, this year. If you look where my finger is now, well, now we are in Davis. We are here, right? Tesvov Davis. Tesvov Davis today. You have Dalad. See the beginning on top of here says Dalad. Dalad is Wednesday. So Tesvov from Davis. December. Okay, so if we go back, one, two, three, four, five. Or well, Shabbos, Shabbos was Yud Teves. I mean, Friday. Friday was Yud Teves, Asorba Teves, and it's a Shabbos Yud Aleph. You see? Yeah, you see me? Because uh, I'm sharing my screen, so I don't see you. But are you following me? Yes, we can see. Yeah, okay. So this is Chodesh Tevez. Let's go a minute to Chodesh uh, Tishri. Chodesh Tishri is uh, going to be in another uh, good few months, another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. Chodesh, Chodesh Tishri. Now, let's look a minute at this month. So on top of here is Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalat, Hey, Vov, Shabbos. So... Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Shabbos. Yeah. So Aleph Tishri is going to be, Rosh Hashanah, is going to be this year on which day? It's going to be on Gimel. Gimel is Tuesday. So Aleph Tishri this year is going to be on a uh, Dinsdag, on a Tuesday. The second day of Rosh Hashanah is going to be on Wednesday. So Aleph Base, which is the first two days of Tishri, Two days Rosh Hashanah is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. So when is Yom Kippur this year? Can you see? You see Yud? Yud Tishri is Yom Kippur. Yud Tishri Yom Kippur. That means this year Yom Kippur is going to be on a Dondadah, on Thursday. Okay. Now, if... You look at every month. Cheshvan, Kislev, Teves, Shvat, Adar, until Tishri, the whole year. How many days are there in a uh, Jewish month? You know? How many days in a Jewish month? 29 or 30. Yeah. 29 or 30. So... The Eid and the Jews go with the moon. So the moon uh, month is 29 and let's say and a half days. So sometimes the month is 29 days and sometimes the month is 30 days. So now look over here. Look at our calendar from this year. Chodesh Cheshvan, which was two months ago. How many days in the month? Choftes. Choftes is? No, Choftes is, Choftes is 29. So Chodesh Cheshvan at 29 days. Chodesh Kislev, also 29. Chodesh Teves, also 29. 
Now, Shvat is Lamed. Lamed is 30 days. Adar, 29. Nisan, 30. Ia, 29. Sivan, 30. Tammuz, 29. Av, 30. Elo, 29. And Tishri, 30. Very interesting calendar we have. So every month is 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, the whole year, besides for one month. So if I look at Kislev, instead of Kislev being 30, because Cheshvan was 29, so if I go 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, then Kislev should be also 30, because Cheshvan was 29. You see? If I go one month 29, one month 30, one month 29, one month 30, then Kislev should also be 30. Correct? Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen because I can't see. I'm going to come back. Okay. So that's a very interesting calendar that we have, and we have to understand why our calendar, instead of doing 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, it does one month. It's taken out one day. Now, do you know the reason? Anyone knows the reason? Why is it like this? Why is one month go 29 days instead of 30 days? Anyone know? Any suggestions? But then, okay. Is it a mistake or is it a uh, special reason? Yeah. It has to do something with the moon. No. It has to do with the moon. Um, <laughs> every, our whole calendar is based on the moon. But why is one month yes. different? Every month is the, the moon. The cycle of the moon is the same every month. Oh, you, you, you would get a Sorbetaris on Shabbos if you had 30 days. Oh, so that is correct and not correct. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because we have... A rule which starts off with Loyadu Roish, which is referring to Rosh Hashanah and a problem with Yom Kippur. So, if I see, we'll come back to Asar Batavis in a second, but let's talk first about Chodesh Tishri. So, this year, Chodesh Tishri, we said that Tuesday is going to be first day Rosh Hashanah. Now, if last month would have 30 days, like it should be, because 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, which is our normal calendar year, that's what, we, that's what we should do, like the rest of the year, then if we would have one extra day in Chodesh Kislev, then Rosh Hashanah this year would be on which day? Not on Tuesday, it'll be on Wednesday, right? If I do Chodesh Kislev, or 30, which should be, because the month before is 29, so 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30. Then if I come to Tishri, then what will happen in the Chodesh Tishri? Rosh Hashanah will be one day later. One day later means, instead of Rosh Hashanah being on Tuesday, Rosh Hashanah will be on Wednesday. Nachon? Correct? Now, that's what should be, according to our normal calendar, following the normal pattern of every single month. If Rosh Hashanah would be on Wednesday, when will Yom Kippur be? Yom Kippur will be on Friday. And says the Gemara, the Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, we don't want Yom Kippur to fall on a Friday. In our calendar, we never have Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur ever on a Friday or on a Sunday. Why? Why don't we want Yom Kippur to be on a Friday? What's wrong? We have a nice Yom Kippur, then we go into Shabbos. This year we had a Tanis on uh, Friday. We had a Sorbet on Friday. And then we went to Shabbos. So why can't we have Yom Kippur on a Friday, uh, fast, in shul, and then we go straight into Shabbos? What's the problem with that? Or, says the Gemara, we don't want to have Yom Kippur on a Sunday. Explains the Gemara like this. 
The Gemara on Rosh Hashanah Tav Chof Amadalof. The Gemara says, the halacha is, if someone dies, if Nebuch, someone is nifter, the halacha is, you're supposed to bury them as quick as possible. You're not supposed to delay. The quicker you can do the kvura, the quicker, the better. Now, on Yom Tif, if a person dies on Yom Tif, now we wait till the second day Yom Tif, but halachically speaking, there's no iser. If you ask a goy to do the kvura for you, on Yom Tif. There's no Isra the Raisa. The only day that is a problem to do a Kvura on Shabbos, you're not allowed to do anything, even for a dead body, is on Shabbos. And Yom Kippur. There's two days where Kvura is forbidden to do. One is Shabbos, and another day is Yom Kippur. Says the Gemara like this. Very, very interesting. This is our calendar. I think many people don't realize this, but if if we know the reason behind everything, then it makes, if we look at the calendar, it makes a lot of sense. And that is like this. If we, chas v'sholem, if Nebuch, if a person would be nifta on Shabbos, and a person dies on Shabbos, then a maximum amount of time, the maximum delay you have for the kavura al pi halacha would be one day. If a person is nifta on Friday night, he can be buried on Motzah Shabbos. Now, what happens if a person is nifta on Yom Kippur? The same halacha. You'll have to wait maximum till after Yom Kippur. Maximum is 24 hours. Says the Gemara, if Yom Kippur would fall on Friday, so what happens if Nebuch, someone's nifta, by Kol Nidre, someone is nifta on Yom Kippur night, how long would we have to wait until the person is buried? Minimum would be two days, 48 hours, because you can't bury on Yom Kippur, and you can't bury on Shabbos. So Yom Kippur will be on Friday, says the Gemara, we're going to have to wait for Kavura until after Shabbos. It can be two days, says the Gemara, because of COVID Hames, in order to respect and to honor the dead person, we don't want to have Yom Kippur fall on a Friday, because otherwise, for a dead body, we might have to wait a, at least two days. Says the Gemara, Mishum Mesayo. Mesayo means a dead body. Therefore, if we look at this year's calendar, which is a good example, if the last month would have had 30 days, like it should have been, according to our Cheshben of our Levona, our moon, so, one month 29, one month 30, one month 29, one month 30. If last month would have had, if Chodesh Cheshvan would have had, sorry, Chodesh Kislev would have had 30 days, then Rosh Hashanah would have been on a Wednesday. If Rosh Hashanah would have been on Wednesday, then Yom Kippur will be on Friday, and we don't want Yom Kippur to fall on Friday. That's why this year's calendar, we have to take out one day from our calendar. Now, you're going to ask a question. How can I take out a day from a calendar? Taking out a day from a calendar is not like a, uh, it's not like a book and you just uh, take out a page. A calendar is something which is uh, based on the moon, right? Something which is based in uh, God's hands. How can I play around with it? Good question, right? You can just play around. I can make a Shabbos on a Tuesday if I want. I can make Pesach full whenever I want. I can do whatever I want. I can just change when the Yom Tov is. The answer is, we have a postuk in the Torah, in Parshish Boy, which tells us, HaChodesh HaZeh Lochem, Rosh Chodoshim. HaKodesh Baruch Hu gave us the Koyach to be Mekadosh, the Levono. Which means, especially in the times of uh, Chazal, HaKodesh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah, we didn't have um, computerized systems to work out exactly how the Levono was going to be. When you saw the new Levono, the witnesses came to Bezdin and they said, hey, we can see the new Levona. And uh, Bezdin said, today is Rosh Chodesh. So it was a power that HaKadosh Baruch who gave to us to be able to fix what day the new month is going to be. It's one of the only things that we see that it's, certain, it's in our power to fix. Even though the moon, we can't touch the moon, nothing we can do to it. But when we see the new moon, Akush Baruch Hu said, you say that now is Rosh Chodesh. So therefore, 
it's a certain koyach that we have in fixing the new Chodesh. With that koyach that we have to fix the new Chodesh, we have the right to be able to play around a little bit with the days of the year and to say when the new month is going to begin. That's a koyach learned out from the Pasuk of Achodesh Hazel Lochem Reish Chodoshim. The beginning of the months, the Rosh Chodesh is up to you. Obviously, there's a certain limit. I can't make Rosh Chodesh whenever I want. But, to a certain extent, we have the power to fix a date. Therefore, says the Gemara, in order, if we don't want that Yom Kippur should fall on a Friday, we in this year, if we don't do anything, then Yom Kippur will fall on Friday. So, for a typical example, this year, Tov Shein Pei Aleph, we're going to take out one day from our calendar in order that the Rosh Hashanah is going to fall on a day earlier. Okay. So now we know we have to take out this year one day from our calendar in order for Rosh Hashanah to fall earlier. But here comes our this question. Why did they take out a day from Chodesh Kislev? I have a whole year to take out a day. Any month. Why Chodesh Kislev? If, if you go back to the picture, I, haven't got it, I can bring it back on the screen, but you'll see um, on Chodesh, I'll bring up for one second again, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. If you look at our calendar, Cheshvan, where my finger is, 29. Kislev, 29. This Kislev over here, where my finger is now, there should have been one more day. There should have been a Lamed over here, 30 days in Kislev, and Teves should have started one day later. So Rosh Chodesh Teves should have been on Thursday this year. Rosh Chodesh Teves was on Wednesday. So my question to you is why did they take out a day in Kislev and not a day in Shavat or a day in Nisan if the whole purpose was that Rosh Hashanah should not fall on a Wednesday. We want it to fall one day earlier, so I could take out a day anywhere in the year. Take out an Av one day. Why take out in Chodesh Kislev? So here we're going to go to what uh, Micha Blumenthal was saying before. That is... Of Hanukkah. Uh, this is... Uh, why would it help for Hanukkah? Because uh, if you would uh, do the first day on, on, a, on a Friday... Uh, for Hanukkah, uh, on, on, if it would fall on, on, on Shabbos the first day, then, then, then you would have and you would make the broch on, on, on Friday because because you can't light the candles on, on Shabbos. I, I hear what you say, but we have anyway, we always, we always have at least one day of Hanukkah on Shabbos every year, whatever day Hanukkah falls, yes. there's always going to be at least one day of Hanukkah is going to be Shabbos. Yes, and, and, and that's also a question. Why, 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 when, when so this year, we, we made two times the broch on, 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 a, on, a, on a Friday. One, one okay, but, and, one, and one, one by day. Okay, so but whenever we light the candles for, for Hanukkah on Shabbos, it's always going to be a bit problematic. Because you're lighting on Friday, but Hanukkah is only going to be on Shabbos. Right. Okay, but that's a going to be every single Hanukkah. And every time you light the Shabbos candles, you're always going to do the mitzvah for Shabbos when it comes to lighting just before Shabbos. But right. why is that the reason for the first day of Hanukkah not to be on a, on a, on a Shabbos? Right. I don't know. For lighting the candles, you can have the candles whenever. Uh, mm. Whenever Hanukkah is going to fall, every year there will always be a minimum of one day on Shabbos. So you light the candles uh, before Shabbos. Like when you light the candles for Shabbos, you light them just before Shabbos. Okay, some say when it comes to Hanukkah, you should have a minicha first, and then you should light the candles. Okay, but still. So what uh, Mr. Blumendam was saying before, and that is, if we would have 30 days in, <coughs> in last year's last month, that means Chodesh Kislev would have 30 days. The when would when would Asor Bateves fall? This year Asor Bateves was on a Friday. If last month would have had 30 days, and we take out one day in the calendar later on in the year, in order that Rosh Hashanah should not fall on a Tuesday, should fall on when, in order that Rosh Hashanah shouldn't fall on Wednesday, should fall on Tuesday, then 
this month in Chodesh Teves would have started one day later. Asorba Teves would have been on on a Shabbos. This last week, Asorba Teves was on Friday. If it would have had 30 days in last month, then Asorba Teves would have been on Shabbos. And so what? And so what? Very nice. Our Sabbath Tevis falls on the Shabbos. We have other Tanesim that can fall on the Shabbos. And other Tanesim which fall on the Shabbos, we don't fast on Shabbos. So what do we care so much if our Sabbath Tevis falls on Shabbos? Why do you have to take out a day from last month in order that our Sabbath Tevis shouldn't fall on Shabbos? We have other Tanesim that could fall on the Shabbos. Tisha B'Av or Shavu Yosef Tamaz. And if it falls on the Shabbos, it's Nidcha. It's pushed off. It's pushed off to Sunday. We've had a few times Tisha B'Av on a, on a, on a, on a Sunday. Because you push it off. So what if Asar Batavis? What do we care so much about Asar Batavis? So, here comes something very interesting. And that is like this. There is an interesting halacha brought down in the Beis Yosef in Shulchan Aruch in Simon Tov Kuf Nun in Urachaim. The Beis Yosef in Tor Shulchan Aruch, he brings down from someone called the Avud Raham. The Avu Draham was a Rishon, and he writes like this. He says that if Asara Batevis would fall on a Shabbos, it's different than all other Tanesim. Asara Batevis on a Shabbos, we would still fast. Tishabav on Shabbos, if Tishabav falls on Shabbos, Shiva Asar Batevis falls on Shabbos, we don't fast. Says the Avu Draham, if Asara Batevis would fall on a Shabbos, then we would fast. And in order for that not to happen, we took out a day in last month, in Chodesh Kislev, and therefore, Asar Batevis will be on Friday, and we won't have the problem of fasting on Shabbos. And obviously, the big question is, um, what is Asar Batevis so much more special than other Tanisim, that if Asar Batevis, says the Avud Raham, in the base Yosef, in Simon Tov Kuf Nun, he says like this, that Asor Bateves is more special than other Ta'anesim. Asor Bateves on a Shabbos, we would still fast. In order for that not to happen, and we are anyway taking out a day in the calendar because of Yom Kippur, so the day that we're taking out, we'll take out in Chodesh, uh, the month before Teves, in order to avoid this problem of Asor Bateves falling on Shabbos. Because we anyway have to take out a day. So take out a day, take it out before Teves, now, what's that got to? Why? And this is our question. What's Asura Batevis so special that Asura Batevis, if that would fall on Shabbos, then we would have to fast on Shabbos? <clears throat> Anyone uh, thought about it? Anyone heard any suggestions on this? There's a few answers, but I think today we'll just do one because we want to learn uh, also a nice Gemara in Baba Kama. But any, uh, any suggestions as to why Asura Batevis is, if you think of it like this, you have a bigger question. And that is that. Tisha B'Av is a much more of a stricter time. This Tisha B'Av, we're not allowed to have, we're not allowed to, we sit on the floor, we don't wear shoes, we, we, the fast starts by night, it's much more strict. People who can't fast are sober tevis, uh, and they, they try their best to try and fast on Tisha B'Av. So we know Tisha B'Av is a much, much more of a stricter time this in all the halachas. But with one halacha, with regard to if, it would fall on Shabbos, Asar Batevis is more strict. Now, there's a few interesting answers. I'll share with you uh, maybe uh, one or two today. And that is, if you look at the Avud Raham himself, the Avud Raham, which is brought down the Bess Yosef, he says that there's a Posuk in Yechezkel. The Posuk in Yechezkel, when he's talking about when Nebuchadnezzar Melech Bovel surrounded the walls of Yerushalayim, says the Posuk in Yechezkel, I think it's in Perik Chof Dalet. He says that it was Be'etzem Hayoyim Hazeh. Be'etzem Hayoyim Hazeh. It was on this day. If you look in Yeshaya, when he brings down all the Ta'anesim, now our Ta'anesim, we fast only the Rabbonon, right? It's not put under the Torah. The only fast which is the Raisa is Yom Kippur, because that's put under the Torah. Asora Beteves, Tzorim Gedalia, Shiva Asa Batamuz and Tishabav is brought down in the Novi. It's brought down in Yeshaya. Now, what does Yeshaya refer to? How does Yeshaya refer to the Allah Tanesim? He says, a postage like this. If you look in Yeshaya, I can't remember exactly where it is, but I'm sure you could find it. Postage in Yeshaya. He says like this. 
צויים החמישי, צויים השביעי, וצויים העשירי. Now, what's צויים הרביעי? If you look, Revi means number four. So you've got Nisan, Ia, Sivan, Tammuz. Nisan, Ia, Sivan, Tammuz. Revi is number four. Tsoim HaRevi is the Tsoim, the fast of the fourth month. Shiva Sabah Tammuz. Tsoim HaChamishi is in the fifth month. That's the one after Tammuz. Av. Tisha B'Av. Tsoim HaShvi is the seventh month. After uh, Av comes Elul, number six. Number seven is Tishri. Which Tannis is that? Tannis of Tsoim Gedalia. Tsoim Gedalia is Tsoim HaShvi. Tsoim HaAsiri is the tenth month. The tenth month is Chodesh, is Chodesh Teves. Nisan Iyah Sivan Tammuz of El Tishri, Cheshvan Kislev Teves. Teves number ten. So Yeshaya refers to all the Tarnasim as a Tsoim in a month. It doesn't say a day. He just says a month. Tsoim Haravi, Hamishi, Shvi, and Asiri. Shiva Subatamuz, Tishabav, Tsoim Gedalia, and Asorba Teves. Says the Avod Ram that since we have a different wording, we have a wording of Be'etzem Hayyim Hazeh, which Yechezkel says in Pein Chof Talut, and that's only a word used by Tsoim Ho'asiri, by the fast of Asor Bateves. Says the Avod Ram, since we see that it's written in Yechezkel Be'etzem Hayyim Hazeh, Be'etzem Hayyim Hazeh makes it stronger makes the Tanis more fixed to that day. Therefore, if we would fall on Shabbos, we would still fast. Now, the Avadram doesn't explain much more than that. He just says, because the Pasuk says, Be'etzem hayyem azeh. Now, that still needs an explanation. Why does Be'etzem hayyem azeh make it so much stronger? That Asura Bateves, on the Shabbos, we would fast. Our calendar, we never have Asar Bateves on the Shabbos. So our discussion is not going to be Halacha Lamaisa because we never have Asar Bateves on the Shabbos because we always take it out one day earlier in the month in order that Asar Bateves should not fall on Shabbos. But what we are asking is why, if it would fall on Shabbos, would it be more strict than Tisha B'Av? Okay, so there's a few answers. If you, we'll go through just one. There's one in the Minchas Chinuch. You can look it up. In Mitzvah Shein Aleph, who explains a whole interesting explanation. There's another explanation from the Ur Shemayach, and there's another explanation from the Chasam Soifer. So now I'll just explain to you one interesting answer from the Ur Shemayach, because his answer, his answer explanation I find very interesting. So we're going to explain from the Ur Shemayach why Asar Bateves is more of a strict tainus that if it would fall on Shabbos, says the Avud Raham, we would fast on Shabbos. But Shemach explains like this, a very interesting uh, thought. What happens if a person wants to fast on Shabbos? I decide, for whatever reason, not for tainus Chalim, I want to fast this Shabbos. For whatever reason. I heard bad news, I want to, for whatever reason, I'm upset about something, I want to take on, take on upon myself a tininess. I want to take on a tininess on Shabbos. So, during the week, I'm allowed to. If I want to fast for whatever reason, I'm allowed to, halakhically. If I want to fast on a Shabbos, I'm not allowed to. Why? Because Shabbos is a day, says the Pasuk, that we always say in Tehillim, we say in uh, Zemiris, Oz tis It's a day that you're supposed to have hano and enjoy the day of Shabbos. If you are fasting on Shabbos, it's the complete opposite. It's the opposite of ta'anuk. No one enjoys fasting. If you're fasting, it's in order to make it harder for yourself. There's no enjoyment. Of it. No one looks forward to a tainis. You know, maybe for your keep you're looking forward because you have a kapora. But no one's excited. Hey, in two days time, I'm going to fast. Oh, wow. In another six weeks, it's going to be a tainis. I can't wait. No one enjoys a tainus. Now, if a person wants to fast on a Shabbos, it's against the halacha of having enjoyment on Shabbos. So you're not supposed to fast on a Shabbos. Now, how much is considered a tainus? If I f- 
fasted for six hours, half a day. Is that also a problem? You're not eating the whole Shabbos, right? <laughs> How much of Shabbos do you have to eat? Of course, you have to eat a certain amount, but uh, you don't have to eat the whole Shabbos in order to be considered uh, Tainuk. So the answer is, if I fast the whole Shabbos, that means from when Shabbos comes in till when Shabbos goes out, I fast, then I have gone against the day of Shabbos, which was supposed to be a Tainuk. Shabbos from night till night, that means 24 hours was supposed to be a Tainuk, was supposed to be enjoyment, and I broke that by fasting. So I'm not allowed to fast from Friday night till Motta Shabbos, because I have taken away my Tainuk. Now, if I fast for three, four, five, six hours on Shabbos afternoon or Shabbos day, no problem. Very often you come home from shul and it's already very late. You also fast, fasted for many hours. That's not a problem. Maybe you should have this udat Shabbat already in the morning because you're supposed to have three sudat on Shabbat. But I haven't fasted. I haven't broken the halakha of uh, fast that I'm supposed to have a tainug, an enjoyment, if I just ate, had kiddush, I came home from shul late. So, he goes, says or Sameach, very interesting. He goes like this. Now, a normal tainus, let's take a tainus of Shiva Asaba Tammuz. Shiva Asaba Tammuz for us is in the summer, and I know it's a very, very, very long day. It could be till 11 o'clock at night if you're living in Amsterdam. For Shiva Asaba Tammuz, you have to go to the southern hemisphere where we have a half a day. It's much shorter, right? So for Shiva Asaba Tammuz, you have to go to the other side of the world, and for, for Asaba Batavis, you have to come to us because then you get the, the shorter tainus from both sides. But uh, living here in Amsterdam, Shiva Asabatamus is a long tainus. But the halacha of fasting only starts by day. We don't fa- start the tainus by the night before. Says the really, there shouldn't be a difference in Shiva Asabatamus and Tishabav. The same way as Tishabav, the fast starts at night. And it's 24 hours. Shiva Sabatamus should also really be a 24 hour tainus. Says our Sameach, in order to make it easier for us, the Chazal said you don't have to fast from the night, you can start the fast by the day. But really, the day of the tainus, the sad day of Shiva Sabatamus, really starts the night already, even though we're not fasting. But I'll give you an example, a very interesting question. This year, there was a family in London. Now, because of the pandemic and Corona, there's very a lot of complications with making weddings and chasnas and traveling and everything. So someone in London wanted to make a wedding this year on the night of Shiva Asabatamus. That means before the fast starts. Let's say the fast uh, Shiva Asabatamus this year, I don't remember, was on a Wednesday or Thursday, I don't remember. Whatever day it was, let's say it was a Wednesday. So... Wednesday by day you're fasting, but Tuesday night he wants to make a wedding. And so the, the interesting halachic question, can you make a wedding on the night of a tainus? Now many people want to say that you should not make a wedding. Why not? Even though the actual fast only starts by day the next morning, but since really the fast should have been 24 hours, Chazal made it easier for us and said you only have to fast by day, so therefore, really the tainus of Shiva Sabatamu starts by night, the night before. You're not supposed to make a simcha on the day of a tainus. The same way as we don't make a simcha, a chasna on Tishubav, that we know. So Shiva Sabatamu is, is really the same. You, should, you also don't make a tainus. You also don't make a simcha. It happens to be that we only fast by day. So says our Sameach, the Shiva Sabatamu is really a 24-hour tainus. The actual amount of hours that we don't eat is only by day because Chazal wants to make it easier for us. But really, the tainus is 24 hours. Therefore, we don't make a chasna. Now, when it comes to Shabbos, what happens if Shiva Asaba Tammuz would fall on a Shabbos? Now, we're not allowed to fast. Now, here comes the question. Maybe only fast by day because the tainus is only by day. So let's fast for 12 hours during the day, the same way as we said before that the only problem of fasting is the whole 24 hours of Shabbos, but 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 or 11, 12 hours of Shabbos is okay to fast because you're not going against the Tainug of Shabbos. So let's fast 
Shiva Asa Tammuz by day. Because the whole time this is only by day. You hear the question? But the answer is that since really the whole Shiva Asa Tammuz is a 24 hours and we don't eat for those 12 hours. So if I don't eat for those 12 hours on Shiva Asa Tammuz, if it would fall on Shabbos, I don't eat for the whole day because of Shiva Asa Tammuz, then you have done the normal tiniest like it would be during the week. And we are not supposed to fast, we're not supposed to do a tiniest on Shabbos. Therefore, Shiva Asa Tammuz, we don't fast on Shabbos, even though it won't be going against the real 24 hours of not eating, because I'm only going to um, eat my Suda on Friday night, because Shiva Asa Tammuz is allowed to eat by night, and I'll fast by day, but I can't do that. Because the normal Shiva Subhatamas is also the same, where you eat by night and you fast by day. So if I'll do the same on Shabbos, that's the problem of doing a tiniest on Shabbos. Now, Asara Bateves, the Pasuk says in the that Asara Bateves is Be'etsem Hayoim Hazer. Asara Bateves is a day fast. It's nothing to do with a night. Be'etsem Hayoim Hazer says, or Sameach is. Be'etzem, it's by day. Like we see, Be'etzem Hayom a few times, is the middle of the day. Be'etzem Hayom Hazeh, it's a day thing. So if I would want to make a simcha on the night of Asar Bateves, let's say this year Asar Bateves was on Friday. Thursday night, I want to make a chasna. Thursday night is not yet the tainis, because the tainis of Asar Bateves is only a day tainis. It's nothing got to do with the night. It's not even that Chazal said, like by Shiva Sotamut, it's too much, so only fast by day. By Asura Bateves, the whole takona of the fast was only Be'etzem Ayyam Therefore, explains the Ur-Sameach, that's what Avudraham means. When Avudraham says that if Asura Bateves would fall on a Shabbos, we would fast, the answer is because the whole fast of Asur Bateves is only a Be'etzem Ayyam is only a day thing. It's not a 24-hour thing which Chazal made into 12. The whole Asura Bateves was, was only Be'etzem Ayyam So therefore, if I would fast for 12 hours on Shabbos afternoon, and I would have my Suda on Friday night, so you come home from Shul Friday night, you eat your Suda, okay, so you have a Tanuk, you're enjoying Shabbos, and by day I'll fast. Because it's Asar Bateves. That I should do, says Avodram. Fast by day and eat by night. Because the whole Asar Bateves is only a day thing. It's not the same as Shiva Subtamos. Therefore, says Avodram, if Asar Bateves was fought on a Shabbos, we would fast. And the Bes Yosef argues on the Avodram and he says, no. Even if it were to fall on a Shabbos, it wouldn't fast. But we were explaining now is just to understand why the Avudraham says that if Asura Batevis were to fall on a Shabbos, we would fast. And some explain that's the reason why we don't want it to fall on a, Shabbos, on a Shabbos. So we took out a day from last month. So the Chodesh of Kislev in this year's calendar, Chodesh Kislev only has 29 days because if it were to have 30 days, then this year, Asura Bateves would have fallen on a Shabbos, and the Kunt Avadram, I would have had to fast. Now, there's two other explanations into the Avadram. The Chassam Sefer has a beautiful explanation, and the Minchas Chinuch has a beautiful explanation. But uh, I think for for today, the explanation of the Sermeach is, is a beautiful explanation, and there's a lot more of discussion around this. But what I find very interesting is that... Um, this whole discussion of taking out a day is really very relevant for our calendar this year because this year Rosh Hashanah would have fallen on a Wednesday if not for taking out a day in the calendar. And like you asked, how can we take out a day? The answer is because HaKosh Baruch Hu lets us. He said to you, Okay. Um, Rav, Rav, time Rav, is Rav. running short and I would like, like to learn some Gemara. But any, any questions on what we discussed so far? Rabdullah, is, is there any advantage of uh, taking away from Kislev above adding one day to Gershwan, which we have also not a problem with Yom Kippur? Um, is there an advantage? Now, we have to, I don't understand.
the exact hours and minutes of the month, but it makes a big difference on exactly the way uh, the moilet falls. Meaning to say, a month is 29 and 0.24, I can't remember the exact, exact, exact calculation. But not every time that Rosh Hashanah falls on a Tuesday, did it mean that we had to take out a day. Sometimes it can fall on a Tuesday because it fell on a Tuesday, meaning it depends, the Rosh, the Rosh, the Rosh Chodesh itself could have been on a Tuesday without, that means if, uh, where's the Canada a second? Let me just pull up a Canada a second. I'll just show you the calendar again. Yeah, you see the calendar? Yeah. So now, our calendar this year, Rosh Chodesh is on in Tishri. Out of Tishri is on a Tuesday. Uh, now, so what are you asking? You're asking if I would take out... In, instead of taking out one day of Kislev, we could have add one day to Cheshvan. It sometimes has 30 days. So is there any reason to, to, to do this way or the other? Ah, but are you asking between Cheshvan and Kislev to put... Cheshvan 30. Yes. Um, Kislev 30. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Cheshvan 30 and then Kislev 30 as well, as it should be. Ah, 30 30, and then you make um, a sorbet Evis on Sunday. And Yom Kippur on Shabbos. Yeah, so then. I'm not sure because if you go back to every month in itself, let's say just jump, jump to Tishri, the, I think we want to keep the Moilid as close to Rosh Chodesh as possible. Ah. Even if we have the ability to be able to play around a little bit, but we still want the Moilid, which is the beginning of the new month, to be as close to the real day that it should be. And then it worked better, perhaps. So it, yeah. could be, it could be, it could be, you have to look into the actual moilid. It could be that if Cheshvan and Kislev would both have 30, then um, you're right, Shabbos can be, um, Kibbe can fall on Shabbos, that's not a problem. But then um, it could be for the moilid to be on track with the day of the actual Rosh Chodesh would be better this way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand, I understand. Thanks. Uh, I, I think that could be a reason. But um, to make it, Two days later, if I would make um, Rosh Hashanah, now it's on Tuesday, if I would make Rosh Hashanah on Thursday, two days later, I'd do. No, then if Rosh Hashanah would be on a, on a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, if Rosh Hashanah would be on a Thursday, then the keep would be on? Shabbos. On Shabbos. But if Rosh Hashanah would be on a Friday, we don't want Rosh Hashanah on a Friday. No, that's right? for sure not. Hmm. Yeah, we don't want Rosh Hashanah on a Friday because otherwise then it will come out and keep on a Sunday. We don't want to keep on Sunday like we said before because we don't want two days between um, of Rosh Hashanah and Shabbos. But hmm. that's probably the answer. You have to have to probably look as far as I as far as I know. That's the um, we, even though we have the right to play around with the Chodesh, but we still don't want to play around too much because we still want the Moilet to be on par with the with the, with the with the Rosh Chodesh. But um, no, it's a very interesting uh, calculation that we have. I always thought that the main reason that we don't have the Yom Kippur on a Friday was, you know, because uh, you've been in shul the whole day and it's uh, it's already long enough. You don't want to go. It's, it doesn't feel right to go from a Yom Kippur into a Shabbos. But uh, I don't think the reason is, I mean, the Gemara says, the Gemara goes, Shona Davchov is... Because Messiah, Mem Tov Yud Aleph, says the Gemara that if a person dies on Yom Kippur, on the Chas Shalom, if it's on a Friday or on a Sunday Yom Kippur, we'll have to wait for Kavura a minimum of two days. And we know that we're supposed to shum Kovet Hames in order for uh, respecting and honoring the dead body, we have to try and get the Kavura as quick as possible. Okay. Um, any other interesting questions on 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 this uh, this topic? Was everyone uh, clear what we discussed? 
Okay, I'm just thinking whether we have uh, a few minutes to go. I think we took uh, too long on our discussion today because we want to learn some Gemara also. I'm just thinking whether we should uh, learn some Gemara today or whether we should um, continue Gemara another time. What uh, what suggestions do we have from uh, the yeah, have another three four minutes. This was very interesting. What you what you yeah. say about the more edits. So uh, okay. So if anyone has any interesting or more additions to what we say, I'm more than happy to to hear uh, some feedback. Uh, why you dunner at gmail.com, ikrekudunnar at gmail.com. I always like to get uh, feedback and hear some more that I can uh, look at more, look into it more, hear back more. I like to uh, not only to teach, I like to learn. So one learns from everyone. So I like to learn from books yeah. and learn from people. So if anyone has anything more to add on to here, to say, to write, to uh, think, I'm more than happy to hear. Okay, so we'll stop over here. Thank you, everyone. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. And take care. I, I, I'll 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 be in touch. Week, take then. care. I have um, no more thank questions. You. Oh, yeah. Can I? Yeah. How is it possible that the the fifth candle of um, Hanukkah never uh, is on oh. on Shabbos? It's the fifth candle. It's you always mean? on Friday. Yes. You mean. It's never. If it's not never, uh, you you never the, the, the fifth the fifth candle is never on 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 uh, on on Shabbat. How okay. No, oh, that calculation I never thought. Is, is it so? You look. You checked it up. I mean, uh, uh, we had a sheet. Yes, the I, I, fifth I, I, is I, I, always I, I, on Friday. Uh, somebody told the me. The fifth me. night Hanukkah is always on Friday? Never never on Friday. Ah, the fifth night Hanukkah is never on Friday. So uh, what's the reason for that? I don't know. I don't know how it is possible. I, I, I can't. It has to do something with 29 and 30, 29. I, I never uh, that, I don't know. I could look it up. In, I don't know. I, I, that's the first time I hear of such a thing. I, I don't know. I don't know if it has to do with the uh, discussion with the book. Yeah, I, I hear it in a different way. I don't know how it, um, how is it possible that it is never felt on, 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 uh, on Friday. Okay, no, that's, uh, that's interesting. No, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's to do, um, and probably it has to do with some uh, connection with the way the month yeah. falls out uh, every year. And yeah. um, what we've got to do with, uh, we, we know the whole thing starts off, there's a, I've quoting, that means the beginning of the year, Roshana, which is the beginning of our calendar year, Tishri, Roshana can never fall on a Sunday and a Wednesday and on a Friday. Sunday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, that's Rosh Hashanah. So it could be based on that calculation. Then uh, Hanukkah could never fall out with a. Uh, um, I don't know. Interesting. I'll, uh, I could look into it. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. And thank you. Very have a good much. day. Feel good. Be well. And uh, thank you for listening. We'll be in touch. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you.